Okay, so this section is about benefits management. Now, I must say it's one of the weakest areas of project management. I think because, you know, to be honest, most projects deliver the product and then they don't really get involved in the evaluation of the benefits that it follows. So um, it's not something that you as a project manager may have come across unless you work for a client organization that's commissioning projects. So what do we mean by benefits management? I should imagine this will catch quite a lot of people out. So critically evaluate the importance of confirming the intended benefits and how we're gonna measure them with stakeholders. Critically evaluate uh, ways in which we can develop a benefits management strategy with priorities and timescales and responsibilities. Critically evaluate the importance of achieving the benefits based on their contribution to the overall strategic objectives of the organization. Critical elevate how we're going to have a benefits realization plan, which is going to talk about how we're going to fund, track, and monitor those benefits, including measures and indicators. And critically evaluate ways in which we can maximize the benefits for the project. So, for many project managers, this may be a new topic because most project managers sort of like deliver the goods and move on and they don't have a huge amount to do with benefits management so but it's clearly an important topic from the apm's point of view because we've got one two three four five learning assessment criteria on it so i'm going to go through this module a little bit slower than some of the others reflecting the fact that it might be new to several people so what do we mean by a benefit so a project delivers an output. So an output is um, a sum of all the deliverables. So <clears throat> some people say you can have outputs and some people say output. Uh, but for my mind, the output is the sum of all the products that we produce as part of the project. So um, I often use the example of a school. So the output of a, if you're developing a new school is the sum component of all the the buildings, the facilities, the landscaping, the sports facilities. And that is the output. That's what we deliver at the end of the project. I hope you're happy with that. Now, the outcome is the thing that that new product or that new output enables us to achieve. So the new cap capability or new thing we can do. So as a result of creating this new school, then we can educate our children better. So that means that the grades will increase. So that is an outcome. So that is what uh, the change in society that we see as a result of putting that output to use. And the benefits are the benefits that flow to the different stakeholders that exist. So the pupils will get one benefit and local employees will get another benefit. And quite often in a program, you'll see you have multiple outputs. So we need a school and teachers in order to achieve the outcome. So it's really clear, important that you get these uh, clear in your head. So an output is what we deliver, it enables an outcome which creates benefits. Now, the benefits are often financial. So if we take another example, say we're a property developer and we're developing a, a block of flats, then the output would be the block of flats. The outcome would be that people rent those flats off us and move in. And the benefits would be that we get revenue from the block of flats. So as a landlord, you're going to get income. But there are benefits to the people who move into those flats because they get somewhere to live. So different stakeholders will see different benefits. Um, <clears throat> and mostly we're interested in financial benefits. So we'll summarise all this in a business case. In a business case, we'll explain the reason for the project, the expected benefits, the, the options for the delivery of the project that we've considered. So that could include doing nothing. It could include rebuilding something brand new. Or it could include just upgrading what we currently have. It'll include the investment appraisal, the costs and the benefits and the net present values to support that. It'll include any constraints. So constraints are a barrier to the delivery. For instance, not being able to work uh, between five o'clock in the evening and six o'clock in the morning would be a constraint or access constraints. The risks, the risks to the 
business and the risks to the project. So usually the major risks are in the business case. And then for our preferred option, the scope, the costs, the overall schedule, the assumptions that we made, any dependencies, external dependencies, uh, the success criteria and the impact on business as usual. Okay, so what's the benefits management strategy? I'm gonna go through this a little bit slower because it's not something that's in the PMQ and it's not something that most project managers get involved in. So let's take an example from the case study to illustrate it. So one of the things we said we're gonna do is a, a click and collect uh, process. So how would we develop a benefits management strategy for just that part? I expect a benefits management strategy would cover the whole program. So it would also include things like saving rent on uh, shops that we're not renting anymore. But let's just look at the click and collect. So what areas of the business will deliver the benefits? So this will be our web team. So you can imagine an Excel spreadsheet that says web team, uh, click and collect. So they're the people responsible for that benefit. How are we gonna measure it? So uh, is it gonna be like the number of orders? Is it gonna be the value of the orders? Is it gonna be the profit achieved on each of the orders? So we need to define the measure, how we're gonna measure that. Uh, who's gonna be responsible for the benefit? So. Uh, I presume in that case it'd be the, the web team leader, maybe, or maybe sales. Um, how important is this in the priority? So maybe that would be our like most important benefit, I would imagine, in this case study. Whereas saving rent on existing um, shops might not be our top benefit, you know. Now, how do we avoid double counting? So this is, imagine how you have click and collect sales. So the sales are being done in a central warehouse, then they're being shipped out to a satellite shop that's going to deliver the sales to the customer. Now, is that a shop sale or is that a click and collect sale? And if that click and collect person comes in and buys something else, is that a sale that's attributed to the shop or is that a sale attributed to the web team? So how, you know, how are we going to avoid double counting these benefits? Uh, how is this linked to the outputs and outcomes? So. So what outputs do we need in order to achieve these click and collect sales? So, you know, you need both a web presence, you need the logistics, you need the IT systems, and you need the warehouse. So, you know, so many parts of the project contribute a cost to achieving that benefit. What are the risks associated with the benefit? So it's not risk with the delivery, it's risk with the benefit. So. Um, you know, people may not want to buy flowers on click and collect. So some of our goods that we do may not be suitable for click and collect. Uh, what categories are there? So usually you would have like uh, long term benefits. Savings might be a benefit. Additional sales might be another category. So how do we categorize those benefits? So, for instance, compliance, legal compliance might be a different category to additional sales because legal compliance you have to do. How are we gonna track them? So we could build the trackers in to the IT systems that we're designing. So if we know what the measure is, so we know we're gonna measure the number of click and collect orders, we can create that data in the database that we design so that the system automatically generates that information to make the benefits of tracking easy. We don't wanna be doing loads of Excel spreadsheets and reports like that. Uh, to produce our core measures for the business. So how are they gonna be reviewed? How are we gonna assure them? So that means how are we gonna know that the numbers are correct? So what checking are we gonna do? And then mapping of the benefits and the monitoring. So for each benefit we have in our benefit tracker sheet, what's the measure? And how that is that measure gonna be mapped? So which system is gonna give us the measures of benefit? And then when do we think the sales are going to come in. So day one or day two, after six months, after a year, after two years, what do we think our, our click and collect sales are going to be? So this might be a new area for many project managers to get their heads around. But it's just thinking about how am I going to demonstrate that my project delivered the expected benefits? What measures am I going to do? And how can I set up the systems that I'm going to build to in order to measure it? So on a bridge, for instance, then the benefits might be reduced congestion. Um, so how are we gonna measure that? 
you know so these are quite uh, challenging and interesting things to set up well in advance but they're a little bit outside of the normal project managers comfort zone probably so the benefits management process is is like every other process first of all identify what those benefits are define all the measures that we're going to do and come up with a benefits management strategy or benefits management plan you know who's going to be responsible who's going to do it how we're going to collect the data how is it going to be reviewed and then we need to track that ideally as part of our core business systems so that needs to be built into the way we do our business and then once we've got those trackers going we need to then realize those benefits so that we know that the project that we implemented had an impact on the project so quite a new topic for many project managers but not one that's wildly difficult but probably something that's fairly new to many people.